How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this episode of Scantober, I'm going to show you how I paid 99 cents to make a 3D model of my face. We're gonna be using the iOS app Bellus 3D to scan and export a 3D mesh that we can prepare for 3D printing. It's a really fun process and I'm excited to dive in. Bellus 3D is an iOS app that uses the front-facing Face ID scanner on the iPhone 10 and above. Bellus uses this technology for a few specific applications, such as dental and medical, but FaceApp is designed to be used by anybody who just wants to make a 3D scan of their face. So for this video, my goal is to show you how to do a scan of a face, export it from the Bellus 3D app, and then import it into Mesh Mixer to prepare for 3D printing. Once you've picked a place to get scanned, the Bellus 3D app has audio instructions that will tell you how to move the camera. It's really easy to follow, so all you have to do is fire up the app and move into position. So from here, we have the Bellus 3D app loaded up on the phone and ready to go. You'll notice there's three options at the bottom, face, face and neck, and full head. For this scan, we want to select full head because we're trying to capture as much geometry as possible. Later on, if you take your scan and you want to put it on an action figure or a pedestal or something like that, you want to have a little bit of extra geometry to trim away from. So here we're going to make sure full head is selected. And to get the scan started, I'm going to make sure my face is in the green oval and hit scan to get started. Look at the camera. Turn left. Turn to the middle. Turn right. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head up. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head down. Turn to the middle. Capture completed. So it's a pretty easy process, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at how the scan came out. In Bellus 3D, the question is, what do you do from here? The app is a little bit different than most. It's not a subscription model, but it's also not a paid app. We can export this file, but it's going to cost 99 cents per file. So, if you have a face scan, you want to take a couple of tries to get it right before you export it, because you're going to pay a dollar for each time you export. Generally speaking, 99 cents is a pretty fair price, considering there's not a whole lot of effort required in capturing the scan. You could do this for free in a few other open source apps like MeshLab, but you're going to spend a little bit more time on it. Here, it's a pretty cut and dry process, so I think a dollar is a fair price. And just from looking around, I can tell it captured a lot of detail, and overall, I'm pretty happy with this mesh. There's a few things that are going to need a bit of cleanup, and if we click the shading button, we can see a more realistic shader on this model, and we can also click surface to see what the mesh looks like underneath the texture. Just from looking at it, I can tell there's a few spots that might need a little bit of cleanup, but generally speaking, this looks like a printable model, and I'm pretty happy with the overall quality. So now that we have our mesh and we're ready to export, there's a few different ways we can do this. Clicking the export button will bring us to the export settings, and there's a feature on here called watertight, which is really useful for 3D printing. If you have this feature turned on, which it is by default, it'll automatically close up the bottom of the mesh and fill in any small holes that were left by the scanning process. What this means is you're left with one solid watertight model that you can send to your 3D printer for printing. We can also select the mesh resolution, and I'll select high definition because that will give us a nice looking mesh underneath that texture, and I'm going to select Z axis up because I'm going to be 3D printing this. From here, all that's left is select export STL, which will send the file off so we can bring it into the next step of the process. I exported both a watertight and a non-watertight version of this mesh from Bellus 3D and imported them into Mesh Mixer, mostly just to see what they look like. So if I scroll around to the back, you can see this model on the left has been closed off and is now watertight mesh. On the right, we just have a surface. This model isn't actually solid, so we'll need to address that before we go any further. Just from looking at the models, I can see there's a little bit of graininess. We can fix that by using a smooth command. We'll sacrifice a little bit of sharpness and detail for an overall smooth, even appearance. And there are a couple of spots that I probably want to smooth out before I send it off to the printer. So Mesh Mixer is really good about being able to sculpt on a mesh like this. So I can select the mesh and select Sculpt, and then I'm gonna use the Flatten tool. I'll pull down the strength just a little bit, and the size, just so it's appropriate with these bumps that I'm trying to get rid of. And you'll notice that causes them to recede and become a little bit less prominent. So now I have a model that I'm a little bit more confident is not gonna look quite as misshapen. So this is something I say a lot, and that's you can put as much or as little time into this as you'd like to get to your finished product. For me, it's not really a priority to get rid of all of these parts, this is just a demonstration, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time cleaning it up. 
However, if this is your model and you want it to look perfect, you can spend as much time as you like going through and smoothing and adding definition to various parts of the model. So at this point, I'm pretty happy overall with the water type model. All I really need to do is run a smooth command to get rid of a little bit of this graininess, and then I'm gonna add a plane cut facing upwards so the model prints out with less support. By selecting the model and going to deform smooth, we can run a smooth command, which again, it'll get rid of a little bit of sharpness, but it will give the model a much more consistent look. So you can see here, this looks sort of like it's, if this was a 2D picture, it would look blurry almost. So from here, the next step is to run a plane cut. And the idea here is if I can run a cut along the side of the neck, that'll bring the whole head up and it'll reduce the amount of support material needed for things like the nose or the hair. So from here, we're gonna go to edit, plane cut, and then I'm gonna play around a little bit until I have an angle that I'm happy with. And that brings us to this point. So now we have both models side by side and you can see this model looks a lot smoother. Generally speaking, it's gonna print a little bit easier because we don't have to worry about trimming up that edge. So from here, we have a pretty good before and after. You can see on the left, the detail's a bit sharper, but on the right, we have a model that's gonna look a little bit less grainy, maybe a little bit more realistic. It's worth noting that using the water type model from Bellis 3D, it did add a little bit of geometry here to the bottom, so it made trimming things like this away a little bit easier. If I had to add that all manually, it would take a little bit of time. It's always better to have a little bit of extra geometry. You can always trim back. It's a lot harder to create it from scratch. So from here, I'm pretty happy with this model, and I think this is ready to print. Now we're in Prusa Slicer, and you can see right off the bat, this came in at life size. So this file is a little bit too big to fit on this printer, so we're going to scale it down. I'm going to print a miniature version, but first we're going to lay it flat. So using the Lay Flat tool, we can select this bottom surface, so now we can see the model follows roughly 45 degree angles on the sides, and then tapers upwards, so that should reduce the overall amount of support material needed. And then we'll scale it down to 25%. And so that looks pretty good to me. We're going to print it out at 0.2. And here's our toolpath preview. This is a pretty quick print and I don't see a lot of challenging areas. I don't really see any geometry that's going to cause any problems. So from here, I'm confident sending it to the printer and seeing how it comes out. This part took about two and a half hours and it looks awesome. It's got a really even consistent finish and there's no overhangs that would have required support material. What's really impressive here is the turnaround time was well under a day. It only took a few hours to scan, clean up, and then print this model. So for somebody just getting started in 3D scanning, this app is a perfect fit. So overall, I think this is a really easy process. The app itself is simple and straightforward, and you can get some pretty high quality meshes out of it without a whole lot of effort. Considering the cost of 99 cents per mesh, this is a pretty easy way to get one scan of your face if you need it for a project. If you're planning on doing a lot of scans, you might want to consider other alternatives that have a flat cost and you can do unlimited scans with them. As always, thanks for watching and have fun scanning.